Hello, everyone. My name is Marie O'Neill, and I am an evolutionary astrologer with the Stephen Forrest Apprenticeship Program. I've been an astrologer for quite a few years, and one of the interests that I have is the decanates, which is what we will be talking about tonight. With the decanates, there are 36 decanates. So the way this class is going to be structured tonight is I want you to, number one, ask questions. If you have someone you know who, has a, who is in a, born in a specific decanate, please let me know. I'd like to know how the, how the person is handling or integrating the, that specific decanate, which is, we'll be talking about the mythology and the archetype of specific decanates. And I'd like to know how it's working with the particular individuals. If you are on the call, I in particular want to know about your decanate and how you perceive the archetype of that decanate operating in your life. So let's go ahead and get started. There are 36 decanates. And what the decanates were created back during the Ptolemy, um, well actually Ptolemy and one of his fellow cohorts recognized that there were 48 constellations, which consisted of the 12 signs of the zodiac and 36 extra zodi uh, zodiac constellations, which we know as deacons. The word deacon comes from the Greek meaning 10, and each decanate corresponds to a 10 degree section of the zodiac. So you're looking at Zero through oh, zero through nine, ten through nineteen, twenty through thirty, or twenty nine point uh, fifty nine arc minutes. So, the uh, decanates first evolved in the Egyptian astrology before being absorbed by the Greco-Roman world. So, this class, of course. Uh, we will be talking about hopefully all 36 decanates we will get to tonight. If not, then we'll schedule a second class to finish it up. This class is interactive, as I said. So now myths. We all know about myths. And myths tell the story. They tell stories of what it means to be human and how to survive being human. And mythic archetypes express as symbols, which is, as we know, what astrology is. Astrology is, um, is an archetype. It talks about different ar archetypes, and each archetype has a myth. Well, there's no difference in decanates. That's uh, what we're doing here. So the study of a set of stories, beliefs, symbols, um, and symbolic systems is, is associated with uh, specific groups or groups of people. And of course, myths usually take place in a primordial world or a golden age prior to the contemporary world, which is interesting because I believe that we have current day myths too. They just haven't been put to stories. So we're dealing with ancient myths with the decanates. So with, um, with the Greek, uh, the Greek mythographer, um, which I'll have to spell his name for you because pronouncing it is a problem for me. It's pronounced, I believe, uh, Yohi Yomihurna, 
and that is E-U-H-E-M-E-R-U-S. He lived in the late fourth century BC, um, and he was the first person to suggest myths might be an actual recounting of historical events. So he forged a new path, basically, with um, a new path of interpretation of contemporary religious beliefs. So when we talk about archetypes, an archetype is basically a commonly inherited primordial symbol universally recognized by everyone. And so for an example, an archetype of the mother, the great mother, that is something that is universally known by everyone. So now let's move on to the next slide. As you can see, this particular slide is showing all of the, uh, the decanates on the wheel and their corresponding, um, uh, their corresponding signs and the mythological um, decanate that is associated with them. I love that particular wheel. The first decanate that we're going to talk about is Aries. Now, Aries, uh, when, let's break this down a little bit more. Decanates are broken down, as I said, into three decanates per sign. We're looking at the elements. For example, Aries is the element of fire. So there's three fire signs, which means we have um, Aries, Leo, and Sagittarius. The first decanate of any sign is going to be a true decanate, meaning it's Aries, Aries. There's nothing filtering it. Its ruler is Mars. So uh, people born in this first decanate, which the solar dates would be March 21st to March 31st, um, they would be considered as true Arians um, because there is no filter. Now you can apply the decanates to any part of the chart. You don't have to be an Aries sun sign to look at the decanate for Aries. Wherever you have Aries in your chart, whether it's on the cusp or whether it's um, with, uh, you know, you know, intercept, intercepted, you can still look at Aries. So with that, think about where Aries is in your chart at this point and uh, see, you know, which decanate it falls into. And then uh, as we're going through Aries and all the other signs, see how it applies. So here we have the symbol of Aries, Aries ruled by Mars. And the, the particular constellation is the uh, triangulum, which is a triangle with the point, uh, the point of it going upward. The word or the key word is activity. In the spir spiritual text, which is through the Hermet Hermetic uh, school, um, the spiritual text says, all life, thought, and action are the product of the union of positive and negative uh, potencies. So here, the triangulum, which symbolizes the, the divine fire that those born under this first decanate of Aries have the capacity to breathe in. When a person born under this decanate is living at their highest, their, their highest potential, um, they, they basically, if they're living at this highest potential, they are true leaders of thought. Um, 
in addition, the three sides of the triangle represent the unity of body, mind, and spirit. You probably already knew that, but I wanted to make sure that you, you do know it. Um, the Aries, of course, is the pioneer of spirit expressed in the fiery fullness in this particular decanate. Uh, there's also a zeal which is brought on by Mars. So the Lord of War, who is constantly seeking new worlds to conquer, um, this is what we're dealing with, with Mars. If it's positive, then when the thoughts are permitted in to um, in and it move and they move upward um, to the point, th this is basically moving to the point of heaven. These people become bringers of better things. If it's not so positive or if the person um, isn't using the higher level of this particular decanate, then it becomes an avenging angel of death, basically, uh, with the destruction as uh, the result. So how does this fit with what you know, or with any of you who might have Aries in the first decanate in your chart? Does anyone have that? Okay, er, yes. I do. Okay. I have, so, the south, I have the south node in Aries, so I guess that would qualify, right? Yeah, it would qualify. <laughs> yes, yeah, squares the nose. It squares Saturn. It squares Saturn. So how is that for you? I mean, the information uh, that I've given you. No, I'm, I'm just like trying to take this in. It's like really spiritual, but like it's amazing because hopefully I've been using the higher point. Um, it's just, uh, it's, it's true. It's true because it's like so raw. It's so either this way or that way. Is that, that's really what it is. Mm -hmm. It is. Yeah. There's no filtering it with Leo or Sagittarius. It's just there. Because it's, because it's like the first one, right? Because it's raw. Right. It's Mars, Mars. Yeah. Right. Right. Exactly. And so you have to be, make sure that you're conscious of how you're working that, South node because it's it's something that is natural to you because it's the south node. It's what you know, and but there's still a gift there. I know this isn't a, a nodal uh, class, but there's still a gift in that south node. So you would have to look at that. Yeah, but it, it seems like it's just like well, we'll talk later. But it's just a lot. It's like always in my face all the time. Yeah, yeah, and it would be. It would okay. be with this. Okay, maybe yeah. we can talk about it later. Thank you. You're welcome. <laughs> I have a question. Sure. How are, are we specifically looking for a planet um, in, in that first 10 degrees, nine degrees of Aries? Is it you, if um, it doesn't have to be a planet, it's um, you're looking for the sign Aries. So it can be on the cusp or it can be with a sign. Uh, the sign is, uh, I'm sorry, the planet. The planet is going to, of course, um, uh, give you the energy of that planet, but it's still going to be, I'm sorry, of, of that planet, but it's still going to act uh, very Aryan. Um, so, yeah, so say you have Saturn in Aries, that's going to be, and then in, in, in the first decanate, uh, that's going to be quite different. What I like to do is look at the sun, moon, and ascendant, in particular in my clients' charts, because that uh, really flavors uh, the sun and the moon. I mean, you can get two Aries in a room, and if one is born in the first decanate or one is born in the third, they're still going to have a lot of similarities, but there's going to be some things that are just a little bit different because of the uh, planet that is uh, modifying. So in this case, first decanate, there is no modifier with 
Mars. The second decanate, which we're going to move on to, is uh, going to be Leo. So, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah, yeah. Can I, ask, can I ask a question? Are you, can I like run this book? So, are you saying that it really needs to be tamed because there's no modifier? Like, it's no. like. No, I'm not saying it needs to be tamed um, because you can't tame Mars. But yeah. <laughs> you can't tame Mars, but you can be proactive and, um, okay. and look at what your motives are and your intentions and kind of pre-plan. Uh, you know, it, it's sort of like, um, a, you know, a person who, you know, if you want to change a habit, you know, you have to form a plan to do it. So if there is a habit that you want to change with this particular, um, uh, and yours is South Node, then I would assume that your entire chart is working with you and the aspects to that South Node is working with you to help you um, move to um, healing any problems or any issues you might have with that South Node so that it can just operate as a gift because it is a gift. Yeah, well, some, I guess it's a double-edged sword. You know, sometimes it is and sometimes it's not, like with everything. Mm -hmm. Yeah, exactly. But, yeah. yeah, yeah, and it's all with how you're you're using it, so. Hmm. Yeah. yeah, well, we all do our best. Okay, this is so interesting. Okay. Okay. okay, thanks, bye. Oh, you're welcome. You're welcome. Now, the second decanate is, of course, um, between 10 and 19 degrees. The solar dates would be April 1st through April 11th. The symbol here is Leo, so that's the sun. And it's, um, uh, you're, uh, how do you pronounce that? Uridinus. You're, oh, my pronunciation is so horrible. I even wrote how to pronounce it. It's um, Eredin, Eredina. That's how it's pronounced. The description is a river whose waters confer youth and immortality. The key word is exaltation. In the spiritual text, it says the fountains of immortal life springs from man's emotional nature. The vibrations of exalted love have a rate sufficiently frequent to affect spiritual substance and build a spiritual body. So with this particular decanate, which is the second decanate, um, we are looking at the river of life flowing from the never failing mountain of perpetu fountain of perpetual youth. Youth. Here we find the um, severity of Mars tempered by the magnanimity of the sun, which has sub rulership of the house of love. So the water, which is the symbol of emotion, bespeaks of affectional influences. Therefore, only through the affections in the sacred precincts of love does man gain the sacred coveted elixir that imparts um, eternal life. So people born with this, born in this particular decanate may seek um, this most hollowed source of power. Uh, they become rulers of man through their inherent power or power to sway the minds of others because we're talking about the sun here too. Um, they're born to lead rather than serve. Because of the sub-influence of Leo, there can be a persistent ambition for power. The heart is somewhat joined to the head, and the more this union is cultivated, the better. The greatest attunement of people born in this decanate is noble affection. Because if you think about Leo, Leo loves affection. It loves being on stage too, 
but it um, it's really it's really about love, and so noble affection is um, what this particular second decanate is about. If you're looking at it in the higher uh, the higher octave. So, anyone have the second decanate of Aries? That's my and son. That's your son? Yes. Okay. And how is that, um, how are you relating to this when you think about your son and the second decanate? Uh, it, it, for me, it's actually being comfortable in leadership positions and, um, and being on the stage. I can do it. I will do it if it's necessary. But as far as wanting to or, or craving it, no. That's, no. that's not, no. Yeah. But you can do it. And you also. Yes, I, I can. And, I, and I've been pushed in positions where I've okay. had to. So. Okay. That's because this is your second decanate. You're born in the second decanate. That's why it's, you know, an energy. It's going to manifest some way. So you have to find ways to um, to work with it. So, all right. The third decanate of Aries is 20 to 29 degrees of Aries, and the dates are April 11th to April 21st. Here we're looking at Sagittarius, which is Jupiter. The ruler of Sagittarius, of course, is Jupiter. The constellation is Perseus. And the description is a warrior in the uh, cause of right with wings on his feet and bearing a sword, helmet, and Medusa's head. The key word is um, prop, uh, propaganda. Here, the spiritual texts say that there is no vicarious atonement. Each soul is a responsible being working out its own deliverance from the thraldom inherited from ancestry and faced upon it and forced upon it by in um, by environment so uh, the sub rulership of course is jupiter which diverts the aggressive um philosophical channels basically uh, consequently, this Sagittarius um, division of Aries has vast spiritual possibilities. When people born in this decanate espouse a progressive line of thought or use their restless, because a lot of times they're restless with the Sagittarian um, uh, influence of Aries. So if they're using their restless energy to protect those who are weak, then they actually do much better. Perseus gained renown through his uh, daring exploits in relieving oppression, basically. And even as he severed the head of Medusa, which would turn anyone who stared upon it to stone, the people of this decanate have the power to destroy the crystallizing influences of having no boundaries. These people can become valiant heroes who wage a successful fight against the um, against the sordid conditions that oppress people and the and civilized life in the philosophical field of endeavor they find useful work in releasing andromeda which is um another decanate which we'll talk about uh, but this is what uh, perseus was doing so it's really the human soul that Andromeda represents. And this particular decanate, people born here can help others to heal, basically, um, heal their soul. 
which is often chained uh, to the rock of materialism to uh, be devoured by envy and lust. And um, so this is the third decanate of Aries. Does anyone have any comments on this one? Nope. Okay. We will move on to Taurus. Taurus. So think about Taurus in your chart and where, you know, where it is in the decanate that it falls in. The first decanate is zero to nine degrees. The dates are April 21st through April 30th. The symbol for the first decanate is, of course, Taurus Taurus. Uh, so it is a true Venusian, Venusian. Constellation is Lip Lippus. The description is a hare running timidly away. Uh, the key word is determination. Um, one, uh, the spiritual text says one of man's greatest enemies is fear. And so with this particular, um, particular de decanate, basically the masters of ancient times in tracing the symbolic pictures in the sky, uh, wanted to convey the, uh, to the later generations, basically, their uh, their conception of the influence of various sections of the heavens. So in this particular case, of course, they um, used the hair. Being the first decanate of the sign, naturally ruling the house of money, where there is a tendency to devote too much energy to the acquisition of wealth. And as the decanate is particularly um, mediumistic, those born under it easily acquire magical powers. Hence, the various traditions uh, regarding it as a place of black magic, which is mm, just as easily as if they can overcome the um, lust for material things. It's only when the individuals born in this decanate are blinded by physical aims that the place of the soul's exaltation becomes an adverse symbol. Those born here have natural healing powers and the ability to crystallize conditions to mold astral substance because this is Taurus, um, and, um, and in, with this particular decanate, people born here have the ability to heal, they, uh, it, but only if they don't get too caught up in material um, acquisition for the sake of material acquisition. Nothing wrong with having material material things and wealth, but if that is the sole focus, then you move away from the purpose of this particular decanate. So any questions on this one? Any weird, where is, does anyone have the first decanate of Taurus in their chart? Nope, okay. Now the second decanate of Taurus, is 10 to 19 degrees. The dates are May 1st through May 11th. The symbol here is uh, Taurus Virgo. So we have, we have Mercury as a sub-influence. The constellation is Orion. Description of Orion is the hunter armed with a huge club fighting a huge, well, with a huge club fighting with the with an infuriated bull. And the key word is struggle with this second decanate. And the spiritual texts say the task of the soul on every plane of manifestation is to struggle with and overcome the limitations of its environment. So 
with this particular uh, decanate, the purpose is given um, is given the um, analytical trend through the sub influence of being Virgo. Therefore, some condition in the environment is attacked and made the center upon which the physical and mental forces are focused. The result is conflict. And this conflict, conflict may be to attain fame through, liter, through literacy or artistic productions, to attain or to attain financial supremacy through business methods, or to rise in the field of science or politics. Therefore, it brings a fight for supremacy. This thought is pictured by Orion, the most successful of all the hunters who attacked, um, who actually attacked and slew the bull, which you wouldn't think that he could, but he did. So the bull represents material treasures and physical limitations over which it is possible for those born under this decanate to rise supreme. They have at their command an unusual uh, supply of electromagnetism and can mentally attack with the force as great as a huge club wielded by the might of the arm of Orion. Thus, they cause, um, they cause um, obstacles to crumble. So they're really good at being able to um, uh, get to the bottom of obstacles and remove them. That is what the second decanate is all about, removing obstacles. Their obstacles and uh, also obstacles of people in their lives. So this is the second decanate. Any questions on this one? Okay. So really with this one, people born under this second day decanate are found to be interested in, it can be interested in personal possessions. Um, the key phrase given to Taurus is, I have. Uh, because the physical is so necessary in developing the spiritual, the ancient texts became physical life and the opportunities should not be slighted. So that's the second uh, decanate of Taurus. Let's move on to the third decanate, which is between 20 and 29 degrees. Solar dates are May 11th through May 21st. The symbol here is um, we're looking at um, Saturn, basically, with, uh, with the second, um, uh, with the third decanate. So the constellation is, uh, our, I believe it's Arija. I'm really horrible with pronouncing names, so please excuse me. And Harger is a charioteer who drives his steeds with one hand and with the other protects a mother goat and her kids. The key word here is mastership. And it is, the spiritual texts say it is the function of a master is to control the forces of nature and use them for the protection of the weak and the benefit of all. So who here has the third decanate of Taurus in their chart? Yes, Marie, I have my south node. You have your south node, okay. And I, I how is this? Um... Yeah, it makes sense to me, definitely. Okay, yeah. is that what you do? Um, I guess so, because I am a Capricorn as well. And okay. I have a very strong Capricorn in my chart. And, <laughs> um, interesting how it's controlling the forces of nature. Mm -hmm. I 
that's interesting. It is. But why do we control the forces of nature? I mean, nature is beautiful. Well, nature is beautiful, and um, you can work with nature uh, to, create. you know, get it to yeah create basically. Mm, exactly. And so, I used yeah. to grow. Um, I used to have a market garden of growing lots of um, different types of lettuces and herbs and things. Mm -hmm. For profit, of course, you know, quite a while ago. And I guess that fits in. Yes, that does fit in. You definitely were um, using nature to supply food, which is a Taurus thing to do. Yes. Very Taurus, you know, very good. Great. Good. So let's move on to the third. I want to make sure I get through these. So, um, and with you recording it, people will have the slides, I'm assuming, too. You can send the slides. We can send the slides to our group if you wish. Okay, that's fine. Um, I don't uh, think you're going to get through all of them. We may need to schedule you for another meeting. Another one as well. Okay. 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 So the with Gemini, the first decanate of Gemini is of course zero to nine degrees. The dates are May twenty first through May thirty first. The symbol here is, it's true Gemini, so it's true Mercury. The constellation is Ursa Minor, which is the little bear. It's a small bear which, which travels backwards and whose long, um, whose long unbear-like tail touches the polar star. The key word here is intuition. Uh, the spiritual text say that uh, the intuition does man con okay through the intuition does man contact the real underlying truth of things so with uh ursa minor um this basically there's a restless activity here and the power suggests that of the mind, uh, the ancients depicted Mercury basically because it's mm, it's very active. It's a very active sign, and so and because the unconscious mind is not as obvious as the objective mind, this bear is small. So too travels about the sky backwards, thus must one direct his attention contrary to the trend of objective life to bear the voice of the silence, which is where, you know, people in this decanate really need to go, needing to go inward to the voice of silence to get information. They are not merely the details of, um, uh, let's see. Oh, their natural field of endeavor is the mental plane. They see not merely the details of a problem, but view it completely, perceiving the proper relation of each part of the whole. And they are not carried away by the restless desire to undertake too many things. They may become intellectual giants for they assimilate all they contact and their deductions rise spontaneously from the soul. So does anyone here have the first decanate of Gemini in their, in their chart someplace? No? Okay. You're, you're, who's speaking? Wanda. So, Wanda, okay. Yeah. And how is this, how are you relating to this particular decanate? Uh, <laughs> everything you said, spot on. Okay. All right. Perfect. So let's move on to the second decanate, which is uh, 10 to 19 degrees, June 1st through June 12th. This particular decanate is tempered by 
Libra. And of course, that means Venus. Constellation is Canis Major, which is a large dog which sits up and watches closely for orders from his master, the hunter. Keyword here is fidelity. The spiritual text, as above all, to thine own self be true. And it must follow as the night, as the night, the day. Thou canst not then be false to any man. That's a mouthful. <laughs> so in this particular, we're looking at Canis Major, which is the big dog, and it contains the brightest star in the heavens, Ceres, uh, the dog star. It's located, of course, at the foot of Orion uh, between Lepus and Argos. That's where you would find this particular uh, constellation in the sky. So in this particular case, um, with the second decanate of Gemini, it's this noble looking beast is the emblem of faithfulness. And through its adoration for its master, also represents the worshiping of serving the deity. For the dog is the master, the dog's master is God. And in this particular decanate, the individual, usually people born here, usually have a zeal. Uh, they are, their consciousness is attuned to the master. Isn't, we don't have to use the term God. We can say spirit. We can say Buddha. We can say, you know, nature. But the individual is usually uh, in service to their master. Um, hopefully it is... Um, their inner self that they are a master to. If this individual is not um, is not on a spiritual path, then their master can be another human. Uh, they it can be a spouse or a sibling or uh, the children or their boss. But usually they have a master, and I know that doesn't sound um, sound good, but that is why this particular constellation is represented by a large dog, because it does serve a master. And, um, you know, I have Gemini in the second decanate with my son, and my master is the divine, uh, the divine mother, and that is who I serve above all else. Um, does anyone else here have the second decanate of Gemini in the chart somewhere? I have no? Mercury in Gemini. Mercury in Gemini? Yes. And how does this work for you? It's in the 12th house. It's in the 12th house? So, of course, it has to be like with a service to humanity. It's a service to the universe. Mm-hmm. That is your master then yeah yeah thank you that's good now with the third uh, decanate of gemini we're looking at 20 to 29 degrees solar dates june 12th through june 22nd the symbols are uh, gemini aquarius so we're looking at uranus here with this particular decanate and the constellation is ursa major the description is a huge bear that travels about the pole, but does not touch the pole star. The key word is reason. Spiritual texts say reason points to the way of truth, the way to truth, and offers a valuable means by which the accuracy of the reports of the psychic senses can be tested. So this is, I love this particular uh, decanate. It's, of course, the last decanate of, uh, of Gemini. 
So those born under this decanate are capable of accomplishing great things through the exercise of their mind. Um, they tend chiefly to rely upon reason. Therefore, uh, they should not, uh, therefore should not only train their minds, uh, which is readily accomplished, but should also cultivate idealism and some form of religion. Uh, otherwise, their eff efforts crystallize and become, and they become self-centered, uh, which is not something that, um, you know, you want to happen. So yet reason uh, does not perceive all. When we approach an object from one side, we're only seeing that side. There is always the other side uh, to be seen. Reason and intuition thus approach knowledge from different directions. This is why it's important to use, into, for this decanate in particular, to use intuition. Um, so into, while intuition touches truth, it does not get, get the view of the realm. Um, even though reason only points to the direction. So let me repeat that again. Intuition touches truth, but it does not get the view that reason does, even though reason only points to the direction. So both the inside and the outside of things need to be known to possess complete knowledge. So as the great bear, it indicates that text, indicates the text, reason points the way to truth and offers a valuable means by which the accuracy of the reports of the psychic senses can be tested. This is why the texts say use reason and intuition. They need to be used together. So anyone have any comments on this particular decanate? Hi, Marie. I don't have any planets here, but it, this section, this decanate, is in my eighth house. And mm. I can really relate to the learning, uh, the reason that points to truth. I need the reason, I need the truth to learn anything like, um, because I am a student here, right, Gemini? Yes. A student of the truth. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's right. Great. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Now we move on to cancer. And Cancer, the first decanate, is 0 to 9 degrees. Solar date, June 22nd to July 2nd. The symbol is Cancer Cancer. I like saying that. So it's the moon as the ruler of, uh, of Cancer. Constellation is Canis Minor. A little yapping, treacherous cur. Um, and it's... Basically, the key word is mood. So it, it's the spiritual text says the wages of sins is death. And with this particular uh, constellation, it is the most prominent star. The most prominent star is the eighth highest star in the heavens, meaning before the dog, uh, which is Procyon, which is P-R-O-C-Y-O-N. And it is the oldest known domesticated animal. So basically with this particular uh, decanate, um, the legend of the dog associated with Canis Minor is that it represents uh, Mara, which is M-A-E-R-A, -E 
the dog of Icarus, um, who learned the secrets of making wine. And when Icarus shared the wine uh, with some unsuspecting shepherds, they rapidly became intoxicated. Uh, believing that they had been poisoned, they killed him. And basically his faithful dog sat on his uh, sat on his grave waiting for him until the dog himself um, was seen by Zeus and may and placed in he placed a curse basically on um, who do you play I'm trying to think of who he placed the curse on he placed the curse on Athens to the effect that until the time that Icarus uh, Icarus's murderers were brought to justice the young maidens of Athens would also commit suicide in the same fashion don't you love Greek mythology I can't believe they do this but anyway the first decanate of cancer is depicted picked it in the sky, of course, by the yapping dog, which is a mongrel without courage or loyalty. By it, the ancient masters thought to convey the thought that those born under this section of the sky are particularly susceptible to domestic intrigue, thus the word moods. Um, they have strong emotions and may easily be carried away by them. Consequently, they should put forth a persistent effort in, to cultivate the qualities of faithfulness and poise. Through the activity of the emotional nature and their sensitivities to all that affect life, they are often capable of remarkable poetic and dramatic expressions. Unknown to themselves, they are the mediums through which entities on the inner planes manifest. So this is the first decanate of cancer. Any questions on that or comments? Okay, we'll move to the second decanate. The second decanate of cancer is 10 to 19 degrees. Solar dates are July 2nd through July 12th. The symbol here is um, Cancer Scorpio. So Pluto is a sub-ruler in, in this particular case. And its constellation is Hydra. Description is a huge water serpent, which extends its length a third of the way around the celestial sphere, all the way to Scorpio. The key word is revelation. Spiritual texts say, not through slaying desire, but through sub, um, sublimating it to a higher plane of manifestation, does man make soul progress? That's a lot. This is, um, uh, this is an intense uh, constellation. I love it. So. Basically, on the back of Hydra, uh, one finds, of course, two other constellations. And this is um, Crater, which is Crater, the drinking vessel, and Corvus, the crow. Uh, together, they form a story from, mytholo from mythology. Uh, which we'll discuss when we talk about the decanate of Leo. So in this particular um, decanate, Hydra, the water circuit serpent uh, commences at the middle deacon of Cancer and extends through the sky all the distance from his home constellation to Scorpio, the constellation of death representing the Scorpio or sex decanate of the domestic sign. So those born under it possess much res many resources and energy, as well as being strongly emotional. The serpent is the symbol of creative energy, 
and the water in which it dwells is the symbol of the strong emotions displayed by these people. So the traditional struggle of Hercules with this monster is not without significance, with, without significance, for it represents the struggle with sensual desires, as well as the struggle to overcome the limitations imposed by death. So any comments? Anybody have um, the third decanate of cancer in their chart? Yes, I have my moon there. All right. And um, how? Yeah. Oh, I'm sorry. The second, I moved too far. The, the, oh. oh, we were on the second decanate and I guess I wanted to move to the third. <laughs> so anyone have the second decanate? Oh, okay. I'll come back later. <laughs> nope. Sorry. <laughs> no. Okay. So we'll move on to the third. So then you have the third decanate. Yes, I have my moon in uh, this decanate. Oh, this should, this is fascinating. I love this. Okay. So this de yeah, this decanate is 20 to 29 degrees. Mm -hmm. And what degree is yours? Um, mm. Do you remember? Yes, I do, but I don't really like to make it oh, that, that, too public. That's all right. It anyway, it's um, at the beginning of this. It's very close to that 20. Okay. Uh -huh. All right. All right. So this particular uh, decanate, the sub-ruler, is Neptune because it's Pisces and its uh, constellation is Argo Navis. The description is a ship that carries its crew across the tempestuous sea to safety. You remember the uh, Argonauts? Yes. The story yes. of the Argonauts? Well, that's what we're looking, this is the ship <laughs> that carried the Argonauts. Uh-huh. So the key word is research. The spiritual texts say poise is the one safe haven of the soul. Therefore, under all circumstances, keep an even mind. Um, with this particular decanate, um, like I said, this is the ship that carried the Argonauts. And if you remember the story of the Argonauts, they, the, the leader had to have himself tied to the mast of the ship so that he couldn't hear the sweet call of the, um, of the, um, oh, forget who they were. He, there was this sound that would cause you to go absolutely mad um, and be encapsulated. Hmm? Mermaids singing? Yes, 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 yes. And so this is the ship that carries you safely across, but you, across the sea, but you have to be, um, you have to use poise and you have to use cunning um, and, you know, your intuition. So how does this work for you with this particular uh, decanate? Definitely, I would definitely agree with that, that under all circumstances, I would keep an even mind. And if I enter rough waters, rough and rocky seas, mm -hmm. uh, I am trying to get that poise back and I am obsessed. <laughs> with getting it. Yes. With it's getting like, it back. Um, you know, I need that poise at every moment of the day. And if I don't have it, well, then I will, um, I'm just waiting to get it back. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. mm -hmm. and, you, and you do what is necessary to actually get it back. Oh, yeah, definitely. Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of work, a lot of inner work. Um, but I find this day can is very strong for me. And my moon is very, uh, you know, very powerful. I do. Mm -hmm. I think it's a very good moon that I have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So this is good. Okay. So we have come to, we're a little, we've gone <laughs> a little bit over the hour mark and we've just made it to cancer, uh, through cancer. So um, how about we reschedule, we schedule another session to get through more.
Okay, that would be fantastic. So we've just done Aries to Cancer. The mm -hmm. next will be Leo to Scorpio, and that'll be followed yes. by the third session, Sagittarius. Yes. To so yes. how for now, we, um, we'll see if anyone has any questions or comments. Yes, that's perfect. I'd love that. Mm -hmm. so all, right. Right. all right, I have a question. I actually missed the beginning, so I'm just imagining you've already shared. Where did you get this information? This information is, um, I obtained it through the Church of Light. Oh, I, I, just, I just joined that. Really? Yeah. Um, so I uh, studied with the Church of Light before, well, I still study with them sometimes too, um, before I uh, started studying with Stephen Forrest as an evolutionary astrologer. And Christopher Gibson, he, I don't know if you've... Um, uh, know who he is, but anyway, you know, yeah, you know, I heard of it through this teacher who taught me. He's a an, an acupuncturist, but he was my astrology teacher for medical astrology, and okay. he was always talking about it. And I signed up online. I didn't actually go to it yet, but I know they're really big into astrology, and it's kind yeah. of very, you know divinely inspired. And I really like, but it's amazing. Okay, so you got it there. Mm -hmm. I got it there, and it's it's wonderful, and I use it uh, with my clients all the time. It's very beneficial. So, yeah. Yeah, no, I really, it, there's a lot to it. And it's like someone else did, like, a, I'm into so many different, like, branches. And someone actually said, when you do the constellations, I'm, I'm a Scorpio by zero. But mm -hmm. the constellations, I'm actually a Virgo, not even a Libra. Like, I oh. look more in the Virgo, like, you know, even though I don't feel exactly like a Virgo. But yeah, it's funny how when everything shifts, we're, it's not the same. No, it's not. It's not the same at all. You yeah. really do have to look at the decanates. Yeah. And not a lot of people do. Well, that was the first thing I learned kind of to do that from this other woman who was teaching me. And I think, because then you know it's like a, if it's Mars, Mars, you know they have a lot of Mars, you know? Like, mm -hmm. it's like so, so you, you know you, you, that's like one place you might need to like, maybe you can't tame it, but temper or supplement. Right. You know? yeah. Well, and I find that um, if I, you know, even with friends or family, if I know their charts and I know their decanates for their sun, moon, or ascendant, uh, say with someone with Mars, Mars, I know that if I want to have a conversation and there is, um, and this conversation gets heated, I need to let them get it out. Just let them say whatever it is they need to say and get it out so that they, they can then hear me. Um, Lauren, do you find that that works for you? Because if you well, I, I, well, I have Scorpio in the first decanate, and I have Leo in the first decanate. I have, like, a lot of zero all over my chart, so I have a lot of raw energy. Like, I think it's, like, trying to figure out how to be a person here or something. I don't know what it means, but, um, but I do find that I'm kind of very, uh, like, like, a very strong color of magenta or something, you know, very, uh -huh. um, it's not diluted at all. It's, like, very strong energy. Yeah. Yeah, and, and you like to, and so you, you would basically, um, you know, if someone is um, working with you on the job or whatever, they need to actually let you have a lot of autonomy uh, so that you can do, you know, you can do what you do best uh, rather than trying to uh, hold you back or um, <laughs> curb you because it just doesn't work. Yeah, like I'm, yeah, you know, like, and Uranus is opposing my ascendant exactly at 20. Mm. Leo, so I'm untamable, so it's like yeah, I need to be free, but then I always do what you want, probably. But if you micromanage me or make me do it, I'm like out of there, you know? Right, yeah. exactly, yeah. exactly. Yeah. I understand that. I've had that experience with you, Lauren. <laughs> what? Do you, are you okay? <laughs> with you. you? What did you say? I've had that experience with you. Can't micromanage <laughs> you. Can't really. You know, we just have to let you rip and let you go and just do it your own way. <laughs> and I find it's really good to just allow that to happen and not mm -hmm. to, um, try and change people, to let people yes. be themselves. That's and, right. And cease the judgment and, you know, take away these ridiculous judgments that we have of how people mm -hmm. should behave. And it's beautiful when you can just let people be themselves. Yeah. Absolutely. 
Absolutely. It, that's really amazing. And then people don't have to be like that because there's no need because they don't feel like people are always trying to put the lid on them or something. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. that's very smart. Yeah, I love that. That's right. So now, do, are there any other questions or? I got to take the dog out. Thank you so much, everyone. I'm going to be back later, but she's like, I got to take her out. Okay, thank you, okay. Lauren. <laughs> thank you, guys. I'll see you later. Good night. Thank you. Okay, good night. Okay, any thank final you. questions from our audience? No comments? I, yes. I had a question, unless someone else did. Go ahead, Wanda. Oh, okay. Um, do you look at the, the uh, planet Eris any? You know what? I have, I look at Eris, yes, I do. And I incorporate it in my readings with people. But it's interesting because all of us who were born today, I believe, Eris was discovered, of course, in Aries. And as far as the decanates are concerned, she moves so slow. Uh, I believe she's at about 15 degrees right now of, of Aries. So we'd be looking at that second decanate. But I have not looked at Eris in terms of the decanates, which is something that I really should do. But I do use her. And you, do you know about her? I've just a little bit. I've been trying to find more information because I've got her very, very close to my son. I was just wondering, did you see that the decanate energy in, in her uh, just really amplified? or That, that was just a thought I had. Eris is uh, akin to Uranus. I mean, she sows, she's about sowing discord, not necessarily in a negative way. Um, remember the story, there's a, a mythological story where um, Zeus had a party and he invited all the goddesses and gods, but Eris was not invited because Eris was considered ugly and, and she's always causing problems and all this stuff. So what Eris does is she throws a golden apple into the window of the, of the party. And you had Athena, um, who else? We, let's see, we have the three goddesses, Athena, Hera, and um, Aphrodite. They see this golden apple or golden apple and, or ball actually and it says on it for the fairest and they all assume hey i'm the fairest i'm the fairest anyway they go to zeus and they ask zeus to decide who's the fairest well zeus is smart he says i'm not doing this so he gets a human remember the trojan war this story goes to the beginning of the Trojan War because the human that he chose, I forgot the gentleman's name, but he decided, well, Hera was going to give him, I believe, uh, wealth, all the wealth in the world, and Aphrodite offered him the most beautiful woman, you know, of his choosing, and Athena offered him wisdom. Well, what did he do? He chose Helen of Troy, who was already married. And Aphrodite gave him Helen of Troy. Helen's husband wasn't happy. And anyway, he, anyway, that's the, um, so basically, Eris started that because she wasn't invited to the party. When we look at her, she is out past Pluto, her orb. So we are looking at authentic power that if we can get to it, we, wherever Eris is, you're going to sow discord. But you can be sowing discord for a good reason, to change things. You could be someone who is different, who walks into... Uh, a room and you sow discord just by being there. But there is a purpose to that. Um, 
but anyway, Eris, there's there's some wonderful there's a wonderful recording that Stephen Forrest did on Eris and Uranus, a whole four day class which I attended, um, which and there's I believe there's a book on Eris available too. I forgot the author, but I know that there is a book on Eris. Um, but there's since she's just been discovered and she's discovered in Aries, it's going to be a long time before we know the full scope of Eris. Uh, and I know that's a long story for your answer, your question, but um, yeah, so I hope that helps. Thank you. Thanks, Marie. Yeah. Apparently, Eris brings order out of chaos. Mm hmm. It really does. She really does, or she can. Absolutely, I, I do see that. Marie, go ahead with your question. Yes, um, you know, talking about Iris, uh, I would be very much knowing more about Iris. And if you have a book on Iris, and if you have some lecture from Stephen Forrest on Iris, I mean, I will certainly be interested in having a lecture on that. Well, okay. Stephen, it, it, yes, if you go to Stephen Forrest's website, forestastrology.com, he, um, he has them up on his website. I'm thinking, I'm wondering if you'd be able to have access to it, though. Uh, but I know that, they, but check it out to see if you can have access to it. I know that if you are a student of his, um, you're given access, uh, and there is a fee, of course, involved. But if not Stephen Forrest's class, which you might be able to um, um, to get that, then I know that there one of the other astrologers wrote a book on Eris, and he was the gentleman who has an astrology program out too. I can't think of his name right now. But if you Google Eris and book, then you'll find it. But I don't have any classes at the moment on Eris. Uh, it's something that I would certainly look at doing in the future because I'm fascinated by her. And I can see I've been watching how she is um, being, you know, how people are using her basically in their own lives based on where she is in their charts so and, and she's she's a doozy so anyway well, all right right now Iris is very close to Uranus I think it's right now it is 22 degree Aries so it's querying Pluto yeah quite strongly quite tight but yeah anyway, yeah my question is about the transit, you know, the planet transiting, like when they change from one decanate to the other one, like mm -hmm. you noticed that there was a difference in the energy and... Yeah, there is a difference, especially when we're looking at progressions, because progressions last a lot longer. And that last decanate, a 29 degree, is a critical, a critical degree, and I'm finding with that particular decade yeah oh wait guys i'm back no hi i have a question i my progressed sun's at 29 sag yes okay. and that is a critical degree so for an entire year you would be tested on that on what you've learned over the past 29 years basically um oh, and i'm starting to teach like or starting to do stuff now like yeah and wow. that's what it's mastery wow okay thank that's amazing yeah and that's the galactic center too right pardon it's the galactic galactic center too right yes yes wow yeah, yeah. It's so fun yeah <laughs> so um yeah you were uh, I was asked about Eris, and I believe, did I answer that question for you, you guys? Almost, you were getting there, I think. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, Marie was asking, um, because 
era is, is in the third decade now, and it's oh, yeah. close to uh, close to Uranus. Uranus. I believe that's what she Uranus. was asking. Okay, and Uranus and Eris go hand in hand. They they both are spontaneous, and you can't control. You can't. Um, uh, it's a spark. It's like a lightning. It's like a, a lightning bolt, and so. Uh, this is one of the reasons, just one of the reasons that we have um, all of the things that are are happening uh, in the world. You know, it's discord is being sown with Uranus and it's so that we can see, so that we can see what we need to change. Of course, there's more to it than that, but I mean, we've got Pluto there too, but um, yeah, so there you have it. That's so true. Thank you. You're welcome. Okay. And if you can't transform it through Pluto, well then go to Eris. <laughs> yeah. Well, and Pluto, yeah. And Pluto had to be, in my opinion, discovered first. I mean, it was, it was, you know, it had to be because you think about Freud and, um, uh, you know, the psychotherapy, I mean, we've been, how, how long have we had psychoanalysis and um, therapy available? And in order for us to get to our authentic power, which I believe Eris is representing also, uh, we have to go through Pluto. Uh, because we have to do basic work first. We have to do the psychological work before we can even access Eris in a good way. Absolutely, I totally agree. Mm -hmm. Okay, so uh -huh. Lawrence, so very awesome and excellent. So thank you so much, Marie. That you are welcome. Very enjoyable, really fantastic. So thanks from all of us, and we'll see you for part two in um, April sometime. Yes, we're scheduled for April. Yes, and then we'll do a part three. How about in July? Sounds good. Okay, thanks again, and catch you later. All right. Have a wonderful time, wonderful evening or day, wherever you guys are. <laughs> Thank, Thank you, Marie. Bye, Marie. Oh, you're welcome. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.